okay so I thought I would quickly cover um, what's new in version 4.05 um, <coughs> so um, I fixed a bug in the sprite editor you probably won't notice um, the main thing I did was uh, clean up the compiler code um, there used to be uh, a thousand or maybe 800 lines of code that I got rid of that uh, was in the back end of the compiler on um, so with the, with the compiler back end uh, there's intermediate co codes which are basically the uh, the uh, instructions that um, it makes intermediate code before it makes the final machine code and um, on each of these they can have one operand or two operands and in the when I before I had it so that um, each of these uh, implementations had to handle um, the the first operand first and the second they had to handle a B or B a the the, the order um, could be inverted um, sometimes uh, it passed a register in RAX and if you're when you're juggling the registers it makes a difference if if RAX is the first operand or the second operand for um, I'm talking about um, the intermediate code not the final assembly um, anyway so I, I I cleaned up the compiler it actually turned out to be a uh, it's actually less optimal now but the code for the compiler is a lot better it I don't it, it doesn't really make a difference on performance um, anyway uh, so uh, yeah I de-optimized the compiler that's what you might call it anyway um, so I also uh, while I was working on that code I uh, I uh, I changed uh, on on the back end. It used to have a um, a type for. Um, let's take this as an example of a typical intermediate code. This is um, this is for a add or and. Um, this is for a, um, all the operations that work like add subtract is different because it can be um, one first or the other first makes a difference anyway I'm not explaining this very well so the add takes uh, that's that's a um, that's an argument argument one argument two and argument three I think this one um, takes uh, one and two and puts them in three I don't remember anyway so uh, each of these uh, intermediate code arguments have a type, a register, and a displacement. And what I did is, um, in the past, I had a, a, a naked integer, um, and I replaced it with a type. Um, the The naked integer was kind of uh, hard to understand. It, it um, what it should be is a 16-bit um, type mode combination. And um, I went ahead and uh, cleaned up the modes. It, it was a big mess. Anyway, so uh, just for your information, I'll, I'll, there's uh, these modes can can be immediate, register displacement, indexed, or RIP displacement. Um, it's uh, this is kind of uh, the intermediate code is very very close to uh, uh, x86 addressing modes, but not quite. Um, so um, basically, uh, what these uh, what these functions do is uh, they convert um, um, the 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 machine code has two different instructions for add one for immediate and one for uh, for register and um, this basically is an abstraction layer. Um, and um, when it when it, um, when it calls this, it um, it takes it from uh, the abstract intermediate code to the less 
abstract uh, machine code. Anyway, um, so I cleaned up the compiler a lot. Um, I also I changed, I abbreviated integer as int. Um, I, I've I've been doing that over the years, doing abbreviations. I have, uh, there's only a couple labels that were affected. Um, I have a list of all my abbreviations. The reason I took so long to, uh, in, in my glossary, in the here's all my abbreviations. I try to, to document them each time I do an abbreviation. Um, you know, they teach you not to use abbreviations, but um, I like them. So I use them, and uh, I don't care what people say. Um, but I do document them, and I try to stay consistent. So I, for a long time, I, I didn't want to use int as an abbreviation because there's interrupt and integer, and I was using it just for... I was trying to keep it one abbreviation for one word, but in this case, there's both integer and there's interrupt. So uh, I... Uh, there's a file in the compiler directory called opcodes and what that is is that's for the assembler it's not for the compiler the compiler doesn't use this but the assembler uses this and this has all the addressing modes for the opcodes and what I just did um, I, I get to choose the rules for how I count the hundred thousand lines that I, I set a limit of a hundred thousand lines for temple OS I don't want to go over 100,000 lines. And when I set that limit, I decided this opcode file belongs in the, must be counted. And what I just did is I just added um, an alias feature. You see how these, uh, let's go to the jump. Um, the jump instructions have alias. You can either say jump not equal or jump zero. And um, I used to have separate entries but now I now I created an alias feature, and so it it saves some lines of code, and it's uh it also makes the uh, unassembler um, so it's not ambiguous. Um, so it, it always uses the preferred um, opcode for the unassembler. So um, and uh, here this is kind of exciting. Uh, this is probably the most exciting thing on this new version I guess um, if you've ever uh, if you've ever looked at um, if you've ever done forms maybe you'd have to be a hardcore I don't think anybody in the whole world except me has done forms in Temple OS forms where you um, you prompt for data well the the um, there's a uh, there's a syntax for the doll doc commands for prompting for data and in the past you used you had to say length equals 511 for a, for a 512 and um, now it figures that out for you so you don't need to put that in the uh, it, it figures that out from the uh, compiler information so um, that should make it really really pleasant that is so cool. I'm, I'm proud of that. So this is how you prompt for uh, for forms. Watch this. So we can do... Oh, it also figures out if it's float or integer. Four, five, six. Anyway, so uh, to, prompt, to prompt for float, you just say... Uh, this is this is the, uh, the string. This is the uh, kind of like the printf or scanf string that gets displayed. And um, then you have the DA stands for data. There's also a list widget and a, uh, a checkbox uh, with a bool. Um, this will figure out if you have uh, if you have a eight if you have a eight bit or six, sixteen bit or sixty four bit. It'll figure out and put the list result into that size. This is only for the. Uh, this is only for the uh, doc, the doc form uh, function. So in this doc form function, I uh, I check the uh, compiler information for the uh, for the member that's being formatted, and then I set. Well, what I did is I made a uh, 
a flag if it's supposed to use the default. If anyway, the way I implemented it is uh, um, the doll dot commands have a flag if it has if it uses the default or not, and if it's um, if it's the default, then it goes ahead and uses the uh, the compiler option. You can override it if you do say a uh, raw type. If you say raw type equals i8, then it would only put the result in an 8-bit. Um, anyway, so yeah, I don't think anybody else is doing any, I don't think anybody on earth has written any programs for Temple OS, but if they did, they could use, they, they would be excited. Um, so finally, I made a uh, character graphics demo. Um, it's actually uh, um, Temple OS um, draws the font uh, by hand. It's it's actually not text mode. And uh, anyway, um, I'll just go ahead and show you this. This is what I did with my Commodore 64 in high school. Um, this example uses smooth scrolling. It it looks crappy with the uh, with the flicker. It's not flickering. The the borders kind of jostle back and forth. I don't know if I'm going to fix that. On the Commodore, what they did is they always uh, had a, a column uh, blank, and that's not so easy to do. If you if you don't look at the edges, it it, it, it scrolls smoothly, but if you look at the edges, then it um, it chops back and forth. So that example is kind of fun. The best part about character graphics is animations. You can make the ma the waves all move. Um, so there, there's no re there's no reason to do character graphics um, except for fun. Um, we have uh, I have some examples of uh, this. Um, whoops! If you look at the big guns, um, this this graphics is, these graphics are uh, it's bitmap, not character graphics. Um, anyway, uh, so. Uh, I'm just showing you some of the examples that don't use character graphics. Um, the other one, Rawhide doesn't use character graphics. Um, uh, so that you can look at those if you want to see how. It, there's no reason to use character graphics. Just do it the way I did with Rawhide. Anyway, so uh, I think that's everything in the new version. Um, I release every couple weeks. I, actually, I release constantly as I as I work. I, I put it on my website. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there were a, there was a day when I had a bug uploaded. Um, as it turns out, uh, well, anyway, uh, yeah, I feel bad about that. Some uh, I think about three or four people downloaded it, the compiler bug. Um, oh well. So I release as I go. And uh, I, I, I should say I put it on my website as I go, and then every every couple weeks I, I do if I, if I've done something I, I I do a release so that I get some attention in the press and it just anyway so uh, that's it.